Hey guys, it's Birdie. Today we are going to be talking about grounding techniques. I'm going to be talking you through a little bit about when we're going to use them, which ones might work in different situations. I'm going to start by showing you my grounding box. This is my personal one that I really recently made. So it's just a small tub, it's something that's sort of easily accessible. So I'm going to go through what I have. Some of the things in there I already kind of use, some of them I haven't yet, but I have a feeling they'll work pretty fine. So the first things I have are these little cute stress balls, obviously colour coded size, coded and ignore the, the ripped off face, but face coded too, so you can sort of tell. And they're, they, they do change in like how, how strong your grip has to be to like fully squeeze them. I can't do that one because I'm not angry enough. These are really useful. I've only used them once or twice so far since Christmas. I think they really are good for when you like feel yourself get to boiling point and you need something to sort of just not take the edge off because it doesn't really calm you down. It's more gives you something to focus on. It's like this, this is my angry ball. I'm going to focus on just squeezing this angry ball, talking about my feelings and like there's something in like the pattern of pushing down and like talking or just thinking it like gets you into a rhythm and it sort of cools you off a little bit get you back to normal breathing get you back a bit to like a more logical mind rather than an irrational angry mind where we just want to spiral and <laughs> scream at everyone next i have this bag um i'm not gonna i'm gonna cover the name i recently got these sweeties off of tiktok and they gave me a free sample of their new lollies and when I looked inside, they're not labelled and they're not packeted either. So I have no idea what flavours they are. And I think that if I'm in a... Perhaps a place where I'm feeling overstimulated, over aroused by everything going on, it might be a good idea to have one and like just try and figure out what flavour it is. Focus on just eating it, I suppose. I think that would be good. You know, we, we always want to focus on our senses, so we've got our, our hands, our touch for our stress balls, and we've got our taste with these lollies that we have to figure out which ones their flavours. I'm sorry, I keep looking at like the mirror, which has shown me to make sure that I'm in focus, and then I have my tablet set up so I can make sure that I look okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get better looking at this camera, I promise. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to smell. Um, this one's kind of smell and touch and again I haven't used this one yet however I am so excited to use it uh, I just need to get a little tub together for using it I think my wife's washing out one of the Chinese takeaway packs so that um, I can use use that um, but it is chocolate kinetic sand I hope you can see that okay so it smells like chocolate oh it's a scratch and sniff I just realized Oh my god. Oh, it's not like real chocolate. It's like, you know, like when you get like chocolate scented perfume or just chocolate scented things, <laughs> which I suppose makes sense given this is chocolate scented. However, what I mean is it doesn't smell like normal chocolate. It just smells, it, oh, you know the really cheap chocolate you would get from like corner shops that were like 50p for like a big bar of chocolate. That's what this smells like. That's amazing. But yeah, it's kinetic sand, so it's all about touch and building and getting your hands in. And then we've got the smell, which is chocolate. I don't think these are edible. It says wash hands after handling, so I assume you're not supposed to eat it. I don't know. I'm sure I'll try at some point. Next, we have another smell. Uh, this one is not good for me when I'm in a sort of manic mood. I can get a bit of like a bit pyro way if I'm in a manic mood. I like fires and stuff not like set what well, I do like I like matches and candles and stuff I'm not like big fires although I do like bonfires what I mean is <laughs> I like flames I do not like causing fires I like creating flames okay <laughs> so this one's a really good one because it is a parma violet uh, candle oh wow that smell really hits you in the face but yeah, it's lovely. It really smells like parma violets, and there's a couple other flavors or scents 
I'm not sure which ones they are. Parma violets is like one of my favourite sweeties. So of course I can just smell it without lighting it. When you light it it's not as intense but it's still pretty good. And it's also good to like focus on a flame if you're able to. If you're someone who doesn't use burning um, as a coping mechanism, watching flames is actually really good for like bringing yourself back, grounding yourself and calming yourself down. It takes a fair bit of practice. It's one that I've never gotten into uh, is watching flames but I love candles. I love smells from candles so that's a good grounding technique for me. We just have a lot of pets so <laughs> we just have a lot of pets so it's really hard to like safely light candles. Next a pack of tissues covering the brand of course obvious reasons and then we have a new one which is one that I didn't consider which are I don't know how I'm going to show you these little pennies different ones different shapes right now I have a euro 50 cents and a one penny and I don't know they smell like coins as well especially if you have something like a small container with a lid put a bunch of coins in and then when you lift it it'll smell like copper you know like pennies like old pennies yeah they're good for noisy so it's good for your ears it's good for feeling if you're able to keep your container in like a fridge then having them really cold as well can be quite a, a useful technique. I suppose they're good for fiddling if you're feeling itchy but also too tired to do anything. Because you don't really need much energy, just play with them in your hands. Second lastly in my box is a little journal and fancy coloured pens. And these ones specifically have glitter in them. Just doodle in writing things down. I'm trying to get in the habit of writing things down. Not quite there yet but I think I have like so many thoughts going on when I'm in an episode or even if I'm just feeling itchy. Um, I'm still trying to get in the habit of it. I'm still trying to get there. It's taken a while to reinforce that. I found that typing things just now for me seem to be working pretty well. I am writing a blog thing or was. I'm not sure. If I'm going to carry on with it. It was something I was trying to do just to like get things out you know get wording get the words out of my brain get them put somewhere sort of try and permanent them or figure them out you know like as though they're like you're probably sick of hearing this sort of analogy but you know like when your earphones your earbuds are all like tangled up like just trying to untangle all the thought knots and just like find where my brain's supposed to be at and where where we should be going with our mental health and lastly my favorite thing um it's not so much a grinding technique however it is very cuddly it's very common he has a name his name is oodles the reason he is called oodles is my teddy that i sleep with it's a giant octopus and he's called noodles i'm not going to explain why uh let's just say wife named noodles based on something else, based on octopus themed Japanese things. <laughs> so we went with Noodles and this is a little baby octopus and his name is Oodles. And he is one of those um, octopus where you turn around, octopi. And not only has he been very good at like sort of helping me figure out what, what sort of side of my feelings I'm on, um, it's also been a good indicator for anyone around me whether, you know, even if they already know that I'm not feeling well, if it's been a hard day I, and I have it like this, they'll they'll remember that I'm having a hard day or they'll know that I'm still having a hard day and then they'll be able to go, okay, what can I do or what do you need? And it's very cute when, when I've been with wife and I've had a sad day and she'll do something like watch a movie with me. Or we'll just get cuddled up and watch catfish or something on the TV. And then she'll bring me snacks. My favourite thing is Diet Cola Chicken just now. Um, I mentioned it in a previous video where we were talking about like comfort foods. And she gave me Diet Cola Chicken and wrapped me up with um, my teddies and tucked me in. And I turned, I turned it around because it made me feel happy and loved. And it was like so cute just to see her smile, to know that she had like 
helped me a little bit. So it kind of works for like both of you and someone in your life. Uh, there are two ways to ground yourself. There is soothing and there is distracting. Soothing is something that I need to focus on for my ground techniques. Um, it's not something that I've had much of growing up is soothing or as an adult really I've not had much soothing. So we're focusing on soothing techniques for me which is why we have the sensory things, they're all calming things, they're all things to sort of, you know, in a sense be a bit more babying myself, you know, like give myself sand to play with, you know, that's such a young person thing to do. Cuddle and teddy, you know, it's very considered a young person thing to do, so it's considered soothing. If you find you are more of someone who requires distracting, I would highly recommend some sort of off offline game on your phone or a tablet or a laptop, something that doesn't require internet, doesn't require spending money, any sort of gambling type of gameplay with our BPD. We can get into addictions pretty easily and gambling is one of them. And gambling is not just defined as um, spending money on scratch cards or going to a casino. Any kind of game that requires pot luck through, sp through spending money is considered gambling. Um, that's sort of where my problems are with addictions or with gambling on mobile apps with like little bits of money, you know, it's like not much money but then by the end of the month, you know, you add up and it's a lot. So yeah, pick a good game offline, no money needs to be spent, something that you really enjoy. Um, currently, I think I've mentioned again in a previous video, Sims 4 is my favourite. I am very well aware that you can spend money on Sims. I have done it. However, I'm at a point where I'm a bit more in control. But I really like Sims, I can get involved in building characters, building um, houses, building a story. You know, I really enjoy messing with like just these imaginary characters that aren't going to feel the things that I'm doing or, you know, have a thought that I have to, I, I won't have to worry about them. You know, if they die, they die. They're fake. Another distracting technique, which I am sad to say I haven't done a lot of, but I do still have it, is these kind of journals. These kind of to-do books. So these ones are very clever. For example, this says, infuse this page with a smell of your choosing. And then another one, draw lines with your pen or pencil, lick your fingers and smear the lines. And the whole point is just to mess the book up. Oh, there's one I did. Pour, spill, drip, spit, fling your coffee here. I don't even want to talk about how badly I failed this. This, this I tried. It was fun. And it just, I don't know. I'm a perfectionist, so it kind of bothers me a little bit when I can't perfect things. But that is a good book to have. It's a good thing to just distract yourself, pick around a page, do it. Doesn't matter what it is, do it. You know, if you have to go outside and get some dirt, if you're able to go outside, go and get some dirt. Uh, come back, fight a little bit with your book. And lastly, please ignore the fact that there's some sort of coffee spilled on this. This is to do after you've had any sort of day. Good day, bad day. This is a DBT wellness planner. Ignore this part. It is based on DBT. However, you don't have to have had done DBT. The reason I'm saying you don't have to have done it is it goes through at the start what each section means, what things you can sort of do. Every month you do a self-care assessment. Very similar to something that DBT do themselves. Very similar to how they track your progress through your DBT's course or your steps course, depending on which one you end up doing. It tells you how to score it, it tells you what your score means, and then you check it every month. Then you have your weekly plan. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. So your weekly planner, you've got all of your days through the week and it says what skills have you practiced? Mindfulness, emotional regulation, distress tolerance and interpersonal effectiveness. Like I said, it explains it all at the start. I don't want to go too much into it. If you want me to go into it, let me know because I did the steps course. I'm still continuing to use those practices and I do think that I am better than I was. 
especially in an episode or getting to an episode and then we have things that i'm thankful for uh, goals i worked towards and today's shining moment so again pretty self-explanatory and it doesn't have to be relateful related to the day um however i like to make things related to the day so it's like what am i thankful for today hmm. obviously my wife <laughs> i am thankful i suppose for today i am thankful for wigs that are cheap and decent because i don't know the the hair situation's not been good recently goals i work towards youtube video um today's shining moment i had a nap today and i woke up feeling refreshed like i cannot tell you how long i've waited for that and then we have a little bit for notes and reminders and then we have a bit that says days sober they say day sober it pretty much just means addictions you know days from addictions um so i have self self-harm i have episodes and i have relationship breakdowns i suppose gambling should have been one back when i was filling this out because it's been quite a while since i filled out the 14th of august 2020 don't don't uh don't take my lack of care in this thing to mean that it's not good because it is good i just a lot of things have been happening um i've mentioned the police stuff a couple of times now about getting myself justice it's that's the only reason i've not been doing it and it's also good to use it when you are not in therapy or having a break from therapy or during a break from therapy you know if you're someone who only sees a therapist once a month That'd be a good thing to sort of keep track of what's going on, keep track of your moods, keep track of what skills you're using. Because sometimes when you get to therapy, you forget, you know, you get like so overwhelmed by just being there or even underwhelmed, I guess, because, you know, you, you hype yourself up about going there. You're like, I'm going to tell her all this stuff. I'm going to tell her everything I've done. And then you get there and you're like, oh, I do plan on hopefully buying one of those DBT books where it's actually the worksheets and i want to see if i can find one for you guys if you're not able to get into a dbt your steps course because i think it's so important that you really try with dbt because it is so useful and helpful and i know that it's not going to work for everyone and like even if it doesn't work for you in the end it's worth a try you know, it's not worth it to just go, that's not going to work, and then walk away. It's always worth it to try. Because you don't know, like, even if you only got, like, 2% better, it's 2% better than you were when you started. And I know it can get tedious, and I know it can get hard, which is why I'm looking into this book, because it would be a book that people wouldn't have to go to therapy for. It'd be a book that, you know, you could start doing by yourself, maybe instead of therapy, waiting for therapy. Maybe I'll review it. Other than that... The one, two, three, four, five method that we discussed before, um, I'll just quickly list it here for you guys to remind yourselves. That is what I think is the best one to have um, ingrained in your memory or ingrained in someone that you love's memory, someone that you are constantly in communication with. So like it's in my life's memory. I'm sorry if this has been like a boring video or something. I just wanted to share something that I think might help other people. Because I've been like goofing off with my hair and stuff, but I, I want to start, I want to start making, hopefully making a difference, knowing that where I came from and where I am now, I would, I would hope that I would be able to give someone else something close, if not more, you know. Thank you for watching. Uh, do the whole like and comment and subscribe thing. I cannot promise when my next videos are going to be, however, I will be making them, so... Stay tuned. <laughs> Bye. Um, so first of all, I want to start by showing you my grounding box. Oh my god. <laughs> I just dropped everywhere. Okay. I am cute. I am cute. I'm cute, I am cute, I am cute. Okay. Let's my boobies are ready. Get my boobies ready. Okay. I am cute. I am cute. I should not have started filming. 
when I wasn't ready, but maybe I'll look back on this and feel some kind of way. Who knows? Right. I look cute. Okay. I look cute. I look cute. I look cute. Hey guys, it's Birdie. Hey guys, it's Birdie here. Why did I do that? Hey guys, it's Birdie. Why did I do that? Okay. The ones that work for me, maybe a couple that don't really work for me, but I think I need to turn my phone on silent. I'm going to start by showing you our gremlin box. Uh, my... I'm gonna sharp the uh, sharp. <laughs> Which was whoa. Only playing it when I know I've got no money to spend. <laughs> really involve your brain power. Oh my God. Today we are gonna be doing grinding techniques. I'm gonna be giving you a couple. My armchairs are speaking. <laughs> Okay, I've, I've tried to start this video so many times. I am officially given up. I'm so excited to release my next wig. Oh, I'm not gonna spoil it because if I like it, I'm gonna really like it. And if I don't like it, I don't want it to be on the internet that I was gonna buy a wig that I really liked. And then, uh, yeah. 